I wish people understood that when you are racist, like, like it, I'm sorry, when that is your guiding principle at any point, if racism is it, then you turn into something you don't want to be. You know, because at some point you are denying facts and denying yes. logic. And uh, it's like you become anti-science, you become, you know, you just, I mean, I'm not trying to throw shots or whatever, but like, you become West Virginia, Mississippi, Alabama. Real talk, two of the best experiences I had this year was West Virginia Al and, um, and Mississippi. Real All talk. right. All right. Jackson, Missis Jackson, Mississippi, they're using... Love, love, love to, to yes. those areas. Jackson, man. Because like I said, you can't call somebody racist and then turn around yes. and not help them. Yes. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> you can't you know, do it. <laughs> so I'm know, trying to I'm, stop. I'm trying not to do I it. I always tell people, Mississippi really is three states. Mississippi, northern Mississippi is straight. I remember I was driving from Memphis mm. to Huntsville, Alabama. And I had to go through northern Mississippi. Mm. That's what you think it is. That that's that's Mississippi, the civil rights movies, Mississippi. That's, 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 that's right. The, the streets are still yeah. wet from being hosed down with yeah, yeah. streets, nothing right, but roads. Right. Roads, not streets. But then once you get down to Jackson, that's a you know, majority black city, you know, in the mm. in the capital of Mississippi. You know, right. and it's kind of progressive, you know, good time. But then when you get to the Gulf Coast, that's extremely progressive because you got the fishing industry, the right. beach industry, and it's just, it's really three different states, you know, so, but I was in Jackson, so I had a good, good time in Jackson, Mississippi, and they're spending state dollars to recruit more teachers of color, Great. you know, <laughs> Great. they had a conference for men of color, and they had a conference for women of color. See, so when people then, are intentional, they yes. can get it done, shout, you know, you don't have to be, them. yeah, so, shout out to who? Felton Moss, his brother, he run, he's from, I think he went to Mississippi Valley, but he's um like in the Department of Education. He's doing a lot of good work. And then I went to Mississippi, not Mississippi, West Virginia, and they're doing a lot of work with restorative practices in their, in their juvenile mm. detention center. And so they're doing, a, and I'm like, Mississippi and West Virginia are doing cutting edge progressive practices? Bruh, thank realized, you. <laughs> thank you for that. Realized, you're snapping me out of something. <laughs> The common goal is poverty. When people are poor, mm. they're looking to think outside the box to help all people. And so if, if poor white people and poor black people have very similar experiences yes. in America. And you know black people have it worse, but they have very similar experiences. Right. And we so need they're each more other to solve to it, yeah. <laughs> and they're more willing to think outside the box than some of your more progressive cities. I don't get me started about some of these progressive cities. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I went to one place. They claimed they were the number one. They were They ranked the number one school of education in the country. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a kind of breakfast with the students of color the next morning. And those kids were traumatized, man, by their experiences wow. at the school. Wow. You know, look at me and the young lady, we were sitting there in tears. That was one of those moments that's going to stick with me the rest of my life. You know, mm -hmm. them young ladies talking about the disrespect, the, the, the racial aggressions they go through every single day. But yet I was at this event the night before where you literally got a banner, number one education school in America. Mm. But this is the experience your people of color, people of color are having at your school. And so it's, I just opened up my eyes seeing America for what it truly is. Not everything is what you think it is. Some of it is, some of it is. But that, that was really hard. That was like a heartbreaking moment this year, talking to those young women. Yeah. Yeah. The the way how people experience something at the lower levels, you know, is yeah. a true indicator of, of what is what is taking place. Yes. You know, so the people who are doing the worst amongst us, we got to look at them. And I just it used to be a time where people would call a country like a third world country and be like, oh, this is a banana yeah. republic. And we are now indicating, we are now showing all those indicators. <laughs> we are now, <laughs> you know, all, all those things that we thought were nuts when we saw like the the, the odd leaders, you know, the odd yeah. peacock-like leaders, like, you know, going around blaming demigod and, you know, like, oh God, like all of that, the, 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 yes. The <laughs> like, we're, we're it, we're all the same. If anything, that's, yes. that's what's been exposed is that, the world is the world, regardless of the color, regardless of the country, and yeah. um, people are up to the same nonsense all yes. over the place. 
Somebody said America was a third world country with a Gucci belt on. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> I I can I can yeah. I can end the day. I hear my daughter in the background playing the cello and all. Can you hear that? <laughs> she was nah, doing that. I right, good good. Um, I was sitting there mad. I was sitting there like that, like mm, this girl don't stop. <laughs> I told her to but, see, but but that's another issue that they don't think about when they talk about work teachers working from home. A lot of teachers <laughs> right. are parents, and you got your own kids. Right. I'm a teacher. teacher. I got three kids who are in yeah. school right now, and they all have classes. <laughs> yeah. And then I know teachers who don't even have internet at home because wow, they yeah. don't get paid enough to pay their bills and have internet service at home. And so that ultimately is another issue. Yeah. And so those are the types of inequities that exist with remote learning. Um, another thing with uh, that, that comes to mind, uh, we're both from a very rural area. Uh, right. So <laughs> what, what issues uh, do you see? Like I know uh, the, the internet is not a thing no. where, where I grew up. Like, oh, when you get too far down 600, <laughs> that just, it just, you know, my, my phone. By my house, by my mom's. Right, my phone <laughs> just turns off, right? Yeah. So, and, and uh. Did you turn off 360 to go to my mom's? When I, I remember I had to upgrade service. I turned, phone was done. <laughs> I just cut it off and saved the battery until I got back to 360. Right. What What is being done or what have you seen being done? Because I, I like how you corrected me earlier when I was trying to throw shade to West Virginia, Mississippi, Alabama. <laughs> and you're like, actually, they're doing some of the most cutting edge stuff, brother. I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> that, was the, that was the thing I had to learn, you know what I mean? Because I went to Mississippi thinking, I'm in Mississippi, let me hurry up and get out of here. And I had, I tell people, I had the best time in Jackson, Mississippi. Of anywhere yeah. I've been in this country this year, Jackson, Mississippi was love for real yeah yeah <laughs> love 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 mississippi yeah. mississippi love alabama love um, you know, but, say, west virginia kentucky yeah. i'm still on the fence with you. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one of the worst experiences in kentucky. <laughs> that was the first time i had like literally about a quarter of the audience get up and walk out and that's okay that's how you feel <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you just thought, you hello. Feel. So now I'm going. I'm going even harder, you know, because yeah. y'all don't want to listen. You know, I'm going harder, but at the same time, my flight. I think my beach was over at three, and my flight was five. So I was like, I'm going harder. I'm getting in this car, getting on a plane, and I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm not sticking around to see the results of what I said. <laughs> y'all gonna have to throw the fruit behind me at my back. Oh, but rural is. Rural is a little different because I think it's so much harder to get that access to internet. And that's just the infrastructure issue we have in America. I see some systems um, taking buses and parking buses near the population, buses that have Wi-Fi capability, and they're parking them in the dense populated areas of the, of the rural, like in a trailer, let's say that's, I park it in the trailer park, or I great. park it outside a big apartment complex. And so I'm seeing some districts are doing that, but Still, it's the infrastructure issue. Until Congress passes some bill to get to get, I think internet should be a right. I really think yeah. that at this point in our world, internet should, it's not a civil right, but it really should be every learner, every American should have access to internet service. And I think once this is over, we're really gonna have to look at some of these inequalities and really take them serious because it's not a fact of, you know, oh, it's a luxury. This is a necessity to live right now. You know, if you want kids to learn, that's a necessity. If you want people to have access to information, because let's be honest, we're not getting it at 5.30 every day. We're just getting the clown show, you know? <laughs> so we're on TV, so we need to have access to internet to where we can look up the information ourselves if that's truly may save some lives today. So we really need to look at that issue as an infrastructure issue for America. Right. Um... Now, one thing that I know I'm noticing in my Facebook, you know, uh, is a lot of Russian bots popping up. You got that popping up on your thing? Oh, man, my Twitter, man. My Twitter, so man, when people man. got the internet, because I got a few friends and all, I got a cousin. I ain't going to name you right now, no, but we playing words with friends right now. Uh, I got a cousin <laughs> who is forwarding stuff from bots and forwarding like false information. I want to tell him. Stop. I, think, I think I know that cousin of yours. <laughs> stop <laughs> it! Stop it right now! <laughs> but 
For real. Internet, man. That's why I don't. I don't entertain the stuff on the internet because if you're trying to satisfy people on the internet, then you're gonna lose your connection with people in the street. And mm. so you get going back and forth and because uh, like I remember like the day that I was announced as a finalist from National Teacher of the Year, the governor came to my school, we had the big ceremony and this and that. Guess what happens a week later? That's when the pictures come out of our government. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so, well, <laughs> Going back to a story I told a little while ago, I was at my mom's house when that broke. So I come back, leave my mom, but I turn back to three on 360, phone is blowing up. I got a hundred and some notifications on Twitter. I'm like, what is going on? People in my DMs calling me Uncle Tom. Oh, me no. That. no. I'm like, I just took a picture with an elected official, man. How am I all of a sudden? <laughs> you know, you know what's wild about that? Because the, he, <laughs> I think it goes to show that even months like sometimes you can have the best of your white folk and they have some blackface pictures in the back <laughs> you know what i mean like that like like that is everybody should be given some type of grace <laughs> in this world because justin trudeau got some black blackface yeah. pictures going on you know and he, as long as he's doing a good job now and has a history that's what i'm looking for for a politician a history and a record of doing good stuff and not just blackface <laughs> we know that's there. I like what the attorney general did. He's like, hey, I got a black face picture. I'm going to tell everybody about it before he comes. <laughs> Just throw it out there. You can't get me. Oh, people. This is it. This is it. Can't get me. I told. I told. I also did. I, I, I... I cut down on prison population. I cut down on pro, like yeah, like, yeah. Hit him with what you did do. <laughs> real, real talk though, that that's the best thing to happen to the black political agenda because our governor can't say no to anything. He can and he will. Gotta, if you watch listening to this, don't think <laughs> I mean weed is legal in Virginia now. It's not legal but it's been decriminalized. You know what I mean? Think about I, that. I, that's huge, yeah. That is a huge yeah. thing. I never thought and, I'd see. And I know, and a lot of that is because that guilt, man. People pushed him on education. We've got so much progressive stuff done in Virginia, and he can't say no because your past has shown that you have to make things right with the people because the people don't believe in you. So, so we should have. Pushing. We should have all of our politicians have blackface. Is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> We should just say, uh, if Joe M got no black face, I don't want I, I don't want him. You gotta have politicians who feel guilty about having black face. Right, real. somebody who actually can feel, who feel, can change, who might have had those understand. feelings, but they feel have the capacity to change. Yeah, who understood that, hey, that black face hurt people, and I need to make amends. You know, right. we got plenty of politicians that are in black face that are proud of that. Yeah. You know, and that's not going to help anybody, but if you can understand that, hey, this is in my past, and you know, and it's weird because my kids, they were they were pissed. I never forget. It. I went in the class that Monday. They were pissed, and I was like, well, honestly, you guys got to ask yourselves the same question because what does forgiveness mean to you? Because mm -hmm. you all have committed a crime. You all have harmed somebody. So Ooh, when you get out, calling out people in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, they're, no, like, no. they're like, oh man, you had to say it like that. <laughs> no, that's just the conversation I have with my kids. What is forgiveness? Is forgiveness saying I'm sorry, or is forgiveness showing your actions and showing regret for the decisions you made? You know, mm -hmm. of course, you all didn't do blackface, but you all did do something that harmed somebody. So now that once you get out, you got to ask, am I forgiven, or what does it take for this person to forgive me? Or will I never be forgiven by the person for what I did? But can mm -hmm. I be a better person and show that my actions show that I have some regret for it? And so, that's real. You know, and that's just, <laughs> you know, I try to, I try to turn everything into a teachable moment because I had one lady, she was one, one young lady, she was completely upset because he had actually looked at, talked to her about her case and actually was having some like thoughts of, hey, this isn't right, you know, and so and then she felt completely heartbroken about it because he's a racist and I, I was like, but honestly, didn't he talk about this organization? Did he talk about that organization that you could possibly 
reach out to about your situation. So mm -hmm. is, is what he did, the blackface, enough to forget, forget the fact that he gave you the name of an organization who could possibly help you and your family in the situation that you're in. And so those are the, nothing that I always say, the problem is people look at the world in black and white, and this is a very colorful world. You know, there's no such thing as black and white. Everything has a shade of color to it, and so every situation.